Welcome back to my calling the internet. Okay, so tonight this vid by RRG and it's called Tory Lanez is a walking red flag. What can I say? I'm a sucker for these um red flag videos that RRG's been doing. But obviously that's no surprise. Look, look at how many I reacted to on this channel. <laughs> what can I say? I find them interesting. And if you love it, great. If not, then fuck off. Just putting that out there now. But yeah. <laughs> Because it's not a no brand that Tory is a walking red flag, but yeah, sure. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction. This guy shot a uh, shot a woman. Of course, uh, of course, the walking red flag. Don't shoot me flag. I don't know what that was. Oh, he's going to fall, man. Does trouble follow Tory Lanes wherever he goes, or is he the drama? That is the question. Now that the legal system has done what needed to be done, we're ready to kick off the new year with a deep dive into the Canadian artist's backstory. After combing through people forgetting that he's Canadian, information, we've discovered his history of lawlessness and questionable behavior. And judging by the title of this video, you already know this is about to be a hot, stinking mess. But before we get into all the juicy details, be sure to head on over to rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of goodies, including butter toffee peanuts, lemon pepper beef jerky, and our brand new chicken and waffles popcorn. To get a better idea about why Tory Lanez is a walking red flag, we have to take you way back to his childhood, because you know we love us a good backstory, honey. Tory yes. Lanez was born as Daystar Peterson on July 27th, 1992. So, yes, he's the Leo. And no, his zodiac sign doesn't matter. We just like to throw this no. tidbit of information into some of our videos for the viewers that are into that kind of thing. Moving on. According to Tory, his birth name means a revolutionary light of progression for the generation. He told Respect Magazine, based on the diverse talents that I've been given, I see it as I can either use these and be extremely good for the world, or I can use these powers and be extremely negative. We are not trying to chose. He was born in Toronto before moving to Montreal when he was about four or five. Then his family moved to South Florida, where his father was a missionary pastor. When he was 11, his mom passed away from complications with anemia, and his dad quickly got remarried. This led Tory on a bumpy journey across the U.S. His family moved to Atlanta, and because of his love for running through traffic, a janitor gave him the nickname Lanes. After a move to New York, Tory wanted people to call him Notorious, but no one was feeling it because he wasn't Biggie Smalls. So he settled on Tory for short. He later combined his two nicknames to become Tory Lanes. At the age of 14, he moved back to Canada, where he was Let's raised by his older brothers. He eventually moved in with his grandmother in the Toronto suburb of Brampton, but she kicked him out of the house, which led to Tory being homeless for a period of time. Losing his mom caused him to act out in ways his family didn't expect. He told Spin Magazine he would constantly tell his family members, You're not my moms. You can't tell me what to do. He got expelled from about 20 different schools for his unruly behavior. No. He also got caught up in the legal system, and at the age of 16, he was facing four undisclosed charges at once. Damn. While leaving his court appearance, 16-year-old Tory went to a nearby mall and robbed an older woman working at a jewelry store. He told Spin Whoa. Magazine, I was so broke, I was so poor, I was so overwhelmed and frustrated with my life, but to this day, I can't forget the expression on her face. Oh, well, so, me. let's do a short recap. Tory was facing four charges, and instead of trying to stay out of trouble, he walked out of the courthouse and continued his streak of disorderly behavior. It's almost as if he couldn't recognize that his actions would lead to consequences. We now know that this actually became a rather disturbing pattern in his life. After robbing the woman, Tory said something clicked in his mind, and it opened up a portal to help him cope with his rebellious nature. The portal, otherwise known as rap music, completely took over his life. Tory stopped going to school, and after getting fired from his job at Denny's, he decided he would never work a real job ever again. It was music or nothing. He told iHeartRadio he wanted okay. to make himself as unemployable as possible by getting a big tattoo on his neck. That... He was young, broke, and had no food to eat, but he was living off of the creative juices that were flowing through him. 
He spent his entire day writing music and didn't bother to sleep some nights. Tori told he definitely dedicates music, that's for sure. a child of God, he was drawn to making, quote, devilish music, which caused him to have a conflict within his soul. He coined the term swavy to describe his style of music, which is a mixture of genres infused into hip-hop and R&B. In 2009, he recorded his first mixtape called TL2TO. The following year, a video surfaced of fellow Canadian artist Justin Bieber freestyling in a recording booth. Some people praised Justin for his lyrical prowess, while others recognized that Justin's lyrics were actually stolen from one of Tory's songs called Beamer Benz or Bentley. The backlash what? prompted 16-year-old Justin to reach out to 18-year-old Tory. Justin also had his friend and collaborator Sean Kingston on the phone. When you find it, nah. <laughs> don't miss it. Be sure to check out our Sean video after we wrap things up here. We'll leave a link in the description box. So I might do that, I might not. The phone call led to Tori getting signed to Sean's now defunct Time is Money imprint. When the news hit the press, Tori was also described as being Justin's new hip hop coach. After three years of touring with Sean and Justin, writing songs for other artists, beefing with Drake, and making connections, the deal went nowhere. Tory overstayed his U.S. visa and said he got banned from America for about seven months. He found himself back in Toronto, isolated from most of his contacts, and quickly aware of how the industry chews you up and spits you out. He told the Fader website, Everybody switched on me. All the artists that I knew that were hot that I came up with, they stopped answering my calls. So he continued to hustle by building an online following. He released new music and produced his own music videos. As an independent artist, he assembled a team that linked him up with other artists, including Meek Mill and YG. He signed to Benny Blanco's Mad Love Records and released his 2016 debut studio album, I Told You, which includes the hit song, Say It. The self-proclaimed underdog was back in the limelight and getting the attention he felt he deserved. But despite all of the positive things going on in his career, chaos was imminent. During a 2016 appearance in Texas, a video obtained by a security guard showed Tory crowd surfing and standing on top of his fans. He is then heard yelling obscenities at the security guards. Fans told TMZ that Tory told the crowd, let's F this place up. And you can probably guess what happened next. The crowd proceeded to trash the venue with chairs, bottles, and no. things getting thrown all over the place. The concert was shut down, cops were called, and multiple people were locked up. Although Tory was accused of inciting a riot, he wasn't arrested. The promoter and venue- What? <laughs> he wasn't arrested. This guy. <laughs> it always comes back to childhood. It always goes back to childhood, doesn't it? I can't, I can't even say shit. I can't- Obviously, I'm not going to excuse all the stuff he's been doing. All I can say is- when you lose a parent, you do hit self-destruct, but that's not me making some kind of excuse for it. Excuse for me justifying him. Absolutely not. Absolutely, absolutely not. He, uh, he, he shot, he shot somebody. Of course, I can't justify any of this shit. But yeah, uh, I know it's like losing a parent. But I was not here, but he's stealing and shit. On April 12th, 2017, he experienced one of the most amazing moments of his life when he welcomed his son, Kai, with an unidentified woman. As he drove out of the parking lot of the I didn't know had a son in the hospital on that glorious day, cops pulled him over. They discovered that his car had an expired dealer tag, and Tori didn't wow. have valid registration. He was also driving without a valid driver's license and didn't have proof of insurance. Wow, well, that was that was clever. After a thorough inspection, cops found 20 grams of MJ in the car <laughs> and a concealed weapon. Fuck's sake, Tori. The cops caught him riding dirty and he got locked up. <laughs> right, Tori told Hot New Hip Hop website, that's something special about the day my son was born. I'll always remember it. Tory didn't just have issues with the law. Anyone who spoke out about him or confronted him in any way had to pay the consequences. Allegedly. After Joe Button and his podcast crew questioned whether things had quieted down for Tory and his career, Tory addressed what he perceived as disrespect during his appearance on The Breakfast Club. Yo, I is can't deal with Joe Button. Quiet for what? Like, are y'all crazy? I, I'm tired of niggas just undermining that, my nigga. I fucking sing the girls and make they... There's no security, shirt off, gorilla style, nigga. Put me down in the middle of this crowd. 
It was perfectly fine for him to defend himself, but many saw his reaction as a bit much. He had other issues to worry about, though, especially ones that could potentially affect his pocketbook. He revealed to Hot New Hip Hop website that Nicki Minaj recorded a verse for his 2018 song, Shooters. Tori said he tried to give Nicki some pointers about her verse through a text message exchange, and he admitted that the words he used in his messages came across like he was arrogant. Nicki didn't take <laughs> kindly to the shit. disrespect and told Tori to remove her verse. Of course she didn't. <laughs> the collaboration would have benefited Tori in many ways, such as by introducing him to Nicki's large fan base. But yeah, he really fumbled the bag, didn't he? With. That same month, a video surfaced of Travis Scott approaching Tori backstage at a festival. Travis can be seen trying to have a calm conversation, but Tori escalates the situation by getting all hyped up and telling Travis that they can, quote, shoot the fade right now. After the What's video, this nigga high? Tori said it was an old issue that had since been resolved. That didn't change the perception of Tori being a hothead who couldn't control his temper. From there, he was accused of jacking other artists' styles and got into beefs with other entertainers, including Joyner Lucas, J.R. Smith, Royce to 5 9 Rick Ross, and Love and Hip Hop Miami star Christopher Prince Hardy, who accused Tory of punching him in the Prince Miami nightclub in November 2019. Now, let's fast forward to April 2020. While most of us were social distancing, Tory and Megan Thee Stallion linked up the for in the sun. The very next month, hip-hop groupie Selena Powell was standing outside of Tori's Miami condo when Tori's rumored fling, Kaylin Garcia, who just so happens to be Joe Button's ex-girlfriend, pulled up, and the two women got into a physical altercation. Tori and Kaylin reportedly sped off in Tori's Bentley, and Selena said she blacked out and later received treatment at a local hospital. She nah. told TMZ Tori had beef with her after she contacted him on Instagram and made fun of his hairline. Kaylin was listed really? as a suspect in the incident, and Tori was just a witness. However, he would be amid his own drama just two months later, in July 2020, when Tori was accused of shooting Megan in the foot after a verbal dispute. A detective later testified that Tori apologized and allegedly offered Megan money to keep quiet as he made reference to the fact that he was already on probation for another crime at the time the shooting took place. That's now, fake. while things pertaining to that case were working themselves out, Tori was at a nightclub in South Beach in May 2021 when he had another run-in with Christopher Prince Hardy. <laughs> yes, another one. Another one. Christopher told TMZ that Tori reignited their long-standing beef by socking him in the face. Tori Shit. denied through his rep that the incident even happened. Christopher already filed a lawsuit against Tori for their first altercation, and he considered filing a new legal case against the artist. As of this video, we're unsure if Christopher went through with a new court filing. Damn. This guy just can't keep his temper in check, can he? Students save way it's more mad. Gym, with up to 30% of memberships and multi-gym access. Now, let's jump ahead to September 2022. Tori was backstage this temper of his man. for the Fall Back in Love Comedy and Music Jam Tour when he passed by fellow performer August Alsina. In a video obtained by news outlets, Tori attempts to shake August's hand as August blows him off and avoids all contact and walks right past him. Tori was left standing in the hallway looking dumb as hell. After all the embarrassment, Tori and his security team chase August down and allegedly beat the brakes off of him. Oh yeah, I heard August about this. to his Instagram to share a photograph of his injuries he obtained from the quote, 4 feet 11 inch sized leprechaun. Leprechaun? <laughs> picture for you in the description box. Not a leprechaun! <laughs> avoid contact with Tori in the first place. Well, just a few months before their encounter, Tori appeared on the remix to Lil Baby and 4-2 Doug's song, We Paid. In his verse, Tori references Jada Pinkett Smith and August's entanglement by rapping, Let me start on Jada. I ain't gonna snitch like August. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> post where he addresses the attack, August said that when Tori approached him with his eight security guards, he tried to have a civil conversation with Tori. August said he explained to Tori that he didn't like how he spoke about his personal business, but he was still a fan of Tori's music. August also said that due to all of his health issues, he was advised to keep his distance from people and not shake hands. August said that although he spoke to Tori calmly and he was never disrespectful, August said Tori was acting erratically due to Tori allegedly hitting a substance that was laced with white powder. 
Of course, I did say was this nigga high. Writing, dude has no real friends and is on a crash out mission. Tori was kicked off of the tour due to his actions. So remember how we mentioned Tori was facing multiple charges as a teenager and he still went out and robbed a jewelry store? Well, that same behavior followed him into adulthood. While facing charges for the incident involving Megan, he still didn't hesitate to allegedly put his hands on August. Tory was out in them streets acting like he had nothing to lose, but the court was going to hold him accountable for his actions. Um, Two and later, they definitely judge did. Him under house arrest until the trial involving Megan the court definitely trial. did. According to TMZ, the court based its decision on Tory violating the conditions of his bail when he got into the altercation with August. Ha! Although August didn't press charges, prosecutors argued that Tory posed a threat to public safety. And even more issues were headed his way. In October 2022, a woman filed a case against Tory, stemming from a New Year's Day 2021 incident in Miami where he allegedly sideswiped her car and fled the scene. According to TMZ, the woman was four months pregnant when the incident went down. Oh no. A criminal case involving Megan kicked off with Tory pleading not guilty to all three charges and his defense arguing that he wasn't the shooter. During the trial, jurors heard testimony from various witnesses, including police who responded to the scene, forensic experts, a doctor who treated Megan's injuries, a neighbor who witnessed the shooting from his home, and Megan herself. Megan said things were tense in the car between her, Tori, and her former friend and assistant, Kelsey Harris. Megan testified that Tori wanted her to come clean to Kelsey about the fact that Megan and Tori had been intimate. According to Billboard magazine, Megan was uncomfortable doing so because she knew Kelsey had a crush on Tori. Megan got out of the car, and that's when the shooting occurred. Kelsey initially corroborated details that pointed to Tori as the alleged shooter in a video interview with prosecutors, but she changed her story on the witness stand. In December 2022, a Los Angeles jury found Tory guilty of all three charges. Outside the courtroom, his family expressed outrage and blamed Beyonce, Megan's management company, this was Nation, and its founder. I already said it in the, in the impressive video about this. I was just like, I like what, what is this? You're blaming Jay-Z, Beyonce, Rock Nation, all that shit? Because was it Tory wouldn't sign to them or whatever? I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but I was even questioning, was this nigga high? I know my answer. Probably was. How you likely was. Z for the verdict. Tory's lawyer confirmed that they were exploring all options, including an appeal. As of this video, Tory is behind bars until his January 27th, 2023 sentencing. He's facing more than 20 years in prison and possible deportation. Yep. Now, of course, none of his past actions and mistakes are directly involved with the case involving Megan. However, his backstory displays numerous times when he behaved like a walking, talking red flag. And now, it looks like it's time for Tori to pay the piper. If you enjoyed this yep. video, be sure... <laughs> what can I say? When you're on this self-destructive path, um, uh, act like you've got nothing to lose, it'll come, it'll come back and bite you, and you'll be held accountable at some point down the line, whether you like it or not. <laughs> but yeah, I can't deal with Tori, man. <laughs> Damn, man. This, this, this guy was just like... I was just basically hit the self-destruct button and he has not stopped pressing that button by the looks of things. That shit's mad. Bree, him and his scooter went and beat the shit out of um, August Alcina. That, that shit's mad. August Alcina's harmless. Like, <laughs> fuck out of here. Looks like his son is gonna be, um, is gonna be staying with the grandparents for the uh, for next 20, 30 years. I don't know how old the kid is now. But yeah, I'm done right, it's gonna see what people saying right now. Someone said, you, uh, you went back further than Tori's hell. <laughs> Uh, that uh, that's sh that's just funny. I can't fully really laugh at that because born said born this territory in my family, so yeah. And I already see my hair falling out, but at least at least it's not receded as far as Tories, so that's a blessing truly. And again, I'm younger than Tory, so yeah. I don't know how old is Tory Lanes. Let me ask Tory. How old is Tory Lanes? Thirty, and I'm twenty three, gonna be twenty four. So, so he's about six years older than me. <laughs> so I said, uh, Tory is the definition of being being your own worst enemy. Yes. His biggest enemy was himself. It wasn't it wasn't Meg, it wasn't Kelsey, it wasn't August, it wasn't Prince, it wasn't any of these other people. It was him himself. There's nothing more frustrating than when the only one stopping you from being the best you is you. <laughs> Man, this shit's crazy. But yeah, he has a very violent history. Even I was like, I didn't have much to say in this video. Normally I have a lot to say in these videos, but this one, I didn't have much to say as I was watching. I was just like, 
I was watching that. Huh? What? <coughs> but yeah, this shit is mad to me. Yeah, someone said, uh, Mega tried to protect him until he opened his mouth. <laughs> yeah, the guy's so, so reckless. And his temper, and his temper here was clearly his downfall. <laughs> There's a lot of people who are, uh, whose temper is their downfall. But at least they have somebody to help calm them down and reel them in. And, and believe me, I'm, believe me, I'm not out here talking like I'm some kind of say of the year because I'm not, not that I've ever, not that I've ever pulled a gun on anybody. <laughs> But have, I, but have I gotten into fights which I which I regret? Yes. Have I done things that I regret? Yes, very much so. But has it been like criminal stuff? No. It's just been petty, trivial shit more than anything. Yeah. Point is, I'm far from a saint. Nothing even close. Someone said, Daddy, ha Daddy had him homeless. Uh, but when that money came, he, he found his way back to Tory. <laughs> oh man, these comments are funny. But yeah, someone said, uh, thank you for the video. Uh, the delusion and excuses surrounding this case is ridiculous. But yeah, expelled 20 times. I know someone who was expelled like, uh, I know someone who was kicked out of school one time, but but never expelled like 20 times though. They were only expelled once and that was it. But yeah, Tori, his temper was his downfall. I'm just glad I got people out uh, here calm me down also, I've calmed down myself as a person. <laughs> There's a lot of people out here who their tempers are their downfall need to get in check or they're gonna end up in prison for, uh, for, worse, uh, for worse crimes than Tories and probably will stay in prison for longer than Tori will be. <laughs> so yeah, someone said, uh, Tori and the baby uh, got some serious issues. But yeah, his father blaming Beyonce, Jay-Z and Rock Nation. I couldn't help but laugh at that. Like, let's not blame these other people for uh, your son's temper. But yeah, is what it is. The, guy, the guy's rocking a flag. He's in prison. Let's hope he actually reflects on all this stuff in prison. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, got nothing else to say, and I'm gonna head out. Nigga needs to get his temper check. Interesting vid. Welcome red flag. I gotta go. Okay, so that's it for this video. Like, subscribe if you want. I post if I feel like it, and I'll see you next one. Bye. <laughs>